You just turned on. You just turned on. Naturally on a wave. You just turned on. Naturally on a wave. Better known as. What's good, everybody? Welcome back to Grown Up Podcast, where you already know what we do. We talk about grown up shit. We talk about life here. And I also throw in that independent music at the end. And today you're tuned in to our special bonus episodes that we have here, the Grown Up Podcast Now interviews. And as you know, we are starting this month uh, out with the artist spotlight. And the artist spotlight is on this artist that we have joining us today. Thank you so much. Appreciate you for joining. So I'm going to have him go ahead, introduce himself, say his name, where he's from, the genre of music that he does, and how long he's been doing music. So go ahead, take it away. Yeah, well, uh, my name is Coco Bebop. Uh, Some people just know me as Coco. Um, Spitz Spiegel, you know. For Uh, sure. I'm from Stockton, California. Shout out 209. 209. (laughs) And I represent good nature. Yeah. You never heard of us. You probably have or someone you know has. And yeah, that's kind of it. All right. All right. So, um, well, let's start out. I want to start. I kind of want to know how you came up with your your name. <laughs> that was it's really unique. So I just kind of want to get a little background on that. Um, maybe the audience might as well. Yeah. Well, some people would know the re- reference of like Cowboy Bebop, like, mm-hmm. of course, mm-hmm. but like. When I first started uh, making music with, it was like my cousin and his friend. This was back in like 2000, maybe six, maybe five around there. Wow. Okay. Um, This dude I would make music with, he didn't want to call me Coco. Like, you know, (laughs) I was like, bro, that's my fucking name. Like, you don't want to call me by my name? Like, he's like, you need a rap, you need a rap name, man. I was like, well, I don't know what the fuck. Yeah. Like, he came out with Spitz and like, like years go by of me going by spits and i was like man like you can't just change it i'm in too deep <laughs> you know what i'm saying like yeah i still want to be coco though like this yeah is yeah this is who i am and then i right. just kind of i went by uh online like um playstation tag or whatever yeah like coco bebop and stuff yeah uh and then I, that from Coco Bebop birth Spitz Spiegel, like Spike Spiegel from okay, Cowboy okay. Bebop. And it just kind of just it just kind of worked together hand in hand. All right. That's dope. That's dope. That's a cool little like background story. Um, I like I like nicknames and stuff. So that's that, that's super cool. So you said you started doing music back in 2005, six ish. So you've been doing that. You've been doing music for a long time. So what kind of got you started into music what has been some of your inspira- inspirations during your music journey and kind of take us through this i mean it's 2022 now <laughs> so yeah. yeah take us through that um started off like fuck when did a mile come out <laughs> like me and my friends me and my friends i was like fifth grade i think when that movie came out and me and my friends used to just shit talk each other i don't think we were even rhyming words we were just like shit talking each other pretending to hold a fucking microphone like like a pencil would 2002 be like a I, I looked it up for you quick reference. oh my 2002. god yeah. <laughs> i was i was a young cat yeah, then, uh, yeah so like i think i was like fifth grade and then uh and you know like that movie was pretty relevant for a couple of years oh yeah in terms of like you know a hip-hop movie oh yeah because there weren't many great ones i still don't think there's many great ones yeah yeah definitely uh, uh but yeah so we started fucking around seventh grade i started actually like starting to write because it started i started thinking like man this is kind of fun right so I, yeah. I, I started writing my friends started like learning how to make beats he lived mm-hmm. across the street from me at the time okay uh and that was cool that was, so seventh eighth grade was just that just like still fucking around but yeah, like yeah. like 
kind of fucking around in a in a more elevated way. Yeah. And then ninth grade was when I started learning how to make my own beats. And on top of that, I started learning how to record like I can record at home. Right. Like, like with programs and shit. And I was like, right, right. Like, yo, like the game it's, changed. After right. that. I stopped <laughs> Next looking level. around after that. I was oh, like, yeah. oh shit. Like, let's actually try to do something. And then that's yeah. when I found out like this was ninth grade. So high school, that's when I found out like my cousin and his friend, his friends, they used to rap too. And we used to all just be at my house and just like whatever, just dick around kind of, but still yeah, make yeah. tracks. Yeah. Um, but but yeah it was wild because like yeah i was starting to learn how to make beats Mm -hmm. but it wasn't until 2008 like two three years later where i started actually getting the confidence to say i can rap over my own beats now got you you. because before like i I still have those beats they're trash (laughs) but we have to start but, somewhere. Yeah, it, it's it's just like it's crazy to see like, damn, I really was making this shit. Oh, and even yeah. to this day, like I could make one right now and I'll probably be like, man, I'm still making trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's dope to, you know, go from scratch. And then while you're still in the, the process of still the, the journey, so to speak, um, it's always cool to go back and and see. I do the same thing. My podcast, I'm like, shit, I kind of been doing this for two years. I'm going on my third. So starting from the first episode till now is like a huge change. So I think it's good to, you know, you can kind of learn from the things that you, you want to add or take away or change. Um, yeah. So that kind of, that kind of leads me to my next question, which is your, your sound and your vibe is kind of like old school rap ish with like some eclectic hip hop beats. So are you still in this kind of process of figuring out your sound or is this the sound that you, that you have like kind of put a stamp on and you want to, you want to go forward with. So I found my sound. It's funny. I actually have a song called my sound. Nice. Uh, I found my sound, like what I know I'm good at and what I'm good over. Mm-hmm. I found that back in like 2011. Um, and from then it was just like, okay, so if this is what it is, how can I take, take this sound a step further? Like where, right. how, how flexible can I be with this? Right. Um, so I'm still like doing that. Like I'm still yeah. like fucking, I, I'm like, I <laughs> describe it as fucking around. Like I'm yeah. still like experimenting. Oh yeah. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, I'm, it's not in a way to where it like, it's very off putting mm-hmm. to, to people when they hear it. It's more of like, like, Oh, that's kind of cool. Right. <laughs> or, right. Right. You know? uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. But I still mess around. Um, but but yeah, I know my sound. I know what I sound good over. I know how I should sound. Yeah. And all this stuff. Um, okay. And, and so like, what is, how can you describe that process to, you know, other people who are trying to do music and, you know, trying to discover and as you say, are fucking around, you know, like yeah. what, what type of, what type of advice or I, what I was going to say, yeah, you fuck around and find out. Yeah. Okay. Right? Like, <laughs> like, um, people don't really know how they sound until they hear a recording of themselves. Yeah. Um, and of course, everybody that hears themselves, they don't even like how they sound. Definitely. Uh, totally agree. but, you so after years of me fucking around recording my own vocals and like learning how to mix my own vocals and all this shit uh i understood like at some point like oh okay like i sound like trash over these fucking like stabs like right like or these little shitty synth beats yeah like i do not that does not work for me. I can yeah. change the tone of my voice. I can mix my voice differently and I could sound okay over it, but mm-hmm. it, I'm never going to sound good over it. Right. I, I sound good over instruments. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, so yeah. And like plucked bass lines and shit like that. Like slap bass lines is very, it's very dependent on like, <laughs> 
the surrounding sounds but but yeah i just i just know what i sound good over and that's kind of i kind of will stick to it but then like other elements will be just like how does this work or right. a lot a lot of the times actually when i make a beat it's like an accident it's like oh shit that <laughs> accidentally sounds tight as fuck that's What's cool though with that <laughs> yeah yeah those kind of like the best sounds or like kind of the best things come out of things that are like accidental you know so yeah. that's that's kind of cool though um so uh, as we were talking about before i started i hit record here you put together a project now did you do this during covid or was this something that you've been working on for like a number a, a number of years and so cuz my question kind of ties into it uh you're talking about under the rising sun yes okay um so my friend ir feek uh he's from uh bay area lives in stockton grew up in stockton mm-hmm. um he was living in the bay area um a couple years ago or he's been out there for years but a couple years ago he was out there and then he moved back to stockton and he approached me with like well he messaged me because his covid was around and he messaged me on facebook messenger and he says says hey like i want to make a an album with you mm. but i just want i just want your your vocals and he didn't want to rap o- <clears throat> over it and he's a rapper first okay over a producer wow uh, he he produces because he wants to make he wants to rap that's the right, same right. reason why i produce actually <laughs> okay like, i okay. just want to fucking rap over some tight shit <laughs> uh so i convinced him to, to be on the track with me or be on the album with me uh and he he said okay so okay he's he sent me like fuck within a month he sent me like 12 beats and then uh and i was like dude like so i just would write to them chorus verse send it to him mm-hmm. he'd be like okay that's dope and then he'd send me something back um but again this is all over facebook messenger got you uh so there's nothing officially recorded right or, or anything yet right <clears throat> just kind of um, business dealings so yeah and he uh once we got most things finished we had like half the 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 album finish in -hmm. terms of like brainstorming it Mm -hmm. Um, then he sent me a track list and i was like okay cool yeah i'm down with all that of course at the end of it some things might change something right or maybe nothing will change but most things change um but then he passed away uh he passed away in december Mm of last year mm. or like the year before last mm, yeah um, <laughs> it's all uh, like... yeah and so i was like holy shit yeah like that that's i don't even know like i yeah. can just say that sucks but it's yeah. beyond it's beyond that it's yeah just definitely like, so for like a month or two i was like what do i do like i he was consistent with all his music he was constantly putting shit out and here i have basically a whole album of his that i either like half ass put it out mm-hmm. or i go full on in yeah and put it out right. and i decided i decided to record the verses he was supposed to have um Ooh. so i wrote i wrote new verses over shit he was supposed to be on um and i filled in i just filled in the gaps basically yeah. um yeah. and i tried to do it i kept i kept mostly the original track list he sent me in the in the order that he mm-hmm. wanted mm-hmm. um some things didn't make it in because i wasn't comfortable with them being in yeah um so i still have about four beats of his that are unreleased songs okay um but yeah so it just it was wild and then i did have one verse from him that he recorded at my house about four years ago Mm. uh, from an unreleased song Mm. and that's that's on the album it's on i think it's the last 
uh song dope in that album so i took those vocals and i put them over this beat it was a donkey kong country beat that mm-hmm. he sampled and it was wild it was wild <laughs> about that beat i was legit listening to that soundtrack like a day or two before uh he sent me that beat and i was like damn i want to sample one of these so bad because this fucking <laughs> this video game has bangers yeah yeah <laughs> so, so yeah and then when when i so when he passed i decided you know what i'm doing this i'm going all out with this four feet because i think he would do the same for me yeah um it was just hard because at first i didn't know should i just rap like he's not gone or mm-hmm. should i or should i acknowledge that he's gone Mm -hmm. or because like like keep in mind half of it was written when he was here yeah the other half is being written while he's gone so it's like the contrast would just might not work together Mm -hmm. so i was trying to figure that out at the same time so the album took like an extra like three four months to be finished wow because super dope i mean i mean the you know the entire kind of concept and story like it's it's a it's tough but it's dope that you know you kind of had turned all that energy and you know that kind of what the hell into the album and um I, you know commend you for doing that um Thank you. let's let's talk about one of the tracks that i'm going to play for the audience here at the end so they can understand the emotion and everything that you put into this um are you motivated so let's talk about it uh how did you what what type of energy where'd you go to to put into this uh you know this track and um how did how did it come about so initially when he sent me this beat so our feet his beats are they are specifically ir feet beats you don't uh-huh. hear these types of beats anywhere and it's it's crazy to me he's just doing his thing uh-huh. so when he initially sent me this beat i didn't I, I liked it sounded hard uh-huh. but i didn't know what to do with it uh, and then i want to say like two months after he sent it to me i finally like it hit me like oh shit like because because for years i had this i had i've been doing this like living life with no motivation there was nothing inspiring me mm. compared to like back in the day where like everything fucking inspired me yeah so i couldn't fit i couldn't find nothing out i started wondering like why why am i like this now why have i been like this for the past like five years mm-hmm. and i started thinking i was like like you know what nothing should inspire me mm-hmm. i should inspire me man after all after like shit that i've been through <clears throat> so the chorus goes you know <clears throat> i'm my own motivation no one got a story like me they seem basic gotta keep pushing can't be complacent dug out of hell but i'm still in the basement so that I... came, that stemmed from me just being like damn dude like you know yeah back in 2012 survive like having cancer and then surviving it wow and then and then like just having that those like like those couple years of just being like i don't know how to describe it just being a shitter just like mm-hmm. being like hella bitter about like having all this pain and yeah. like doing all this shit you're supposed to do MRIs, PET mm-hmm. scans, blood mm-hmm. transfusions, like all this shit. It's just hella annoying. Yeah. And it kind of like demotivates you like mm-hmm. severely. Oh, so yeah. then I was like, you know what? Like I should be inspiring myself considering the shit that I've gone through. They're, like there shouldn't be able to have anything like mentally or physically be able to hold me back. Yeah. So that's kind of how that song became what it was. Wow. That's incredibly strong and inspiring for sure. And, you know, when people hear this, uh, I hope that they're inspired by that because I am, you know, that's a, uh, that's really tough Had to come back from, from cancer and, you know, all that and put that into this track. Um, you know, I hope they hear all that, you know, when they hear it. So, um, like I said, I commend you, man. You're still here. You're, you're still strong. So mm, um, that's super dope. Um, so who have been some of your influences in your life, not just with music, but, um, you know, any type of influences that you have that have helped you stay focused on the journey that you have? Uh, it's a lot of it's a lot of little shit. Um, I would say 
one big one to me for uh, my last couple albums because they were concept albums um, was like um, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy radio shows Mm -hmm. and uh, the work that Hideo Kojima does on his like video games. Mm -hmm. um, Those those things like turning turning like a radio show which is just an auditory experience turning that into like something that you you feel that that turning auditory into emotion was like Mm. a thing right yeah from from that radio show i studied other radio shows started Mm. uh hideo kojima has inspiration from films that he transferred into video games and it was like it was seamless in a way how he did it, but because mm-hmm. I knew what he was doing, I was able to like study it. Mm-hmm. And, and, uh, so I was like, okay, how can I do what he did? But like what, what, what they did with Hitchhiker's Guide and other radio shows. Right. And make it hip hop. Right. Right. So, so I, st- I learned from, from that a lot. Um, trying to, trying to like gather information okay. and uh, and uh listening to other concept uh albums and there's there's always like a miss with them like i like there's a thing like you understand it mm-hmm. mentally but you don't get anything else from it mm. like you get the imagination and you get like what they're going for mm-hmm. and you you understand it but you don't actually like feel it much. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right. Well, um, before I get to a couple of these last questions here to wrap it up, we kind of touched a bit on COVID. So I wanted to ask this question, how has COVID affected your independent journey? Um, if you've had any setbacks, how are you adjusting to uh, those uh, and coming back from them? Or if things have improved in a positive way, in what ways did it help? Um, it's it's been mostly negative, but I mm. will talk about positive as well. Okay. Uh, so I Stockton has no record stores. Mm-hmm. I only record dig in other cities or countries. Mm-hmm. Um, COVID has not enabled me to go to cities or countries. <laughs> so I have not been record digging. I've been sampling. Ouch. I've been sampling video games, TV shows, uh, movies, mm-hmm. uh, basically whatever I can find on the internet that I gotcha. think just sick is what I'll sample. <laughs> uh, positive. COVID has shown me the people that I have kept in my life that are absolute trash. Um, <laughs> yeah. it, has, it has shown me who is racist. It has shown me mm. who is sexist, who's a mm. piece of shit. Mm-hmm. It has shown me who gives a fuck about the people and who don't. It has shown me who is just like bad. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I have been able to cut a lot of ties and throw out a lot of trash. Yeah. Because yeah. people have nothing else to do but be on the internet and be pieces of shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I can most definitely feel you on that. COVID is definitely <laughs> COVID has definitely shown people's asses like full moon. <laughs> it's yep, been crazy. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Um I appreciate that uh that perspective though. Thank you. Um so you kind of touched on, you know, cancer, close deaths, you know, some of these uh, t- really tough obstacles to go to to go through. So what are any other obstacles that you have had to face that you could lend some advice about to those who are either currently in the same types of situations or who might eventually run into these on their path? Um, if you know somebody dealing with cancer okay if you know someone that had cancer you could you could talk about it uh it's okay Mm -hmm. ask them of course not everyone's the fucking same yeah uh but if you know somebody going through cancer because i get this a lot from Mm -hmm. a lot a lot of people um it's you need to be strong for the person 
mm-hmm. if you if you go see somebody that has cancer and you just feel pity and and you're like oh i'm sorry you're going mm-hmm. through all this bullshit and blah, blah, blah. you're gonna piss that motherfucker <laughs> off i guarantee you nobody yeah. wants to be pitied mm-hmm. i'm out here fighting the good fight mm-hmm. and you want to pity me I right. pity you motherfucker <laughs> get the fuck out of here get out of my fucking hospital room <laughs> yeah that Most be definitely. strong for that person yeah um talk to them hang out with them um you know don't touch them they don't want to be touched they can't <laughs> they can't be touched they might die so but yeah uh <laughs> that's that's kind of what i gotta say about that all right all right so uh, has your music journey kind of also helped you with this you know like exploring like like how you feel inside you know of course i mean music is a form of expression so you know with going through the things that you've been through and having to overcome these obstacles you know how has music kind of played its part in all of this uh yeah it, it's actually funny because uh last year i found out if i don't write because it was summer mm-hmm. i had i had no way to, my recording setup was just non-existent Mm-hmm. Um, and I just wasn't making beats or nothing because it was like I only I only want to rap, so I'm mm-hmm. not gonna make beats if you can't rap. <laughs> uh, and so I found myself like not being able to write or nothing for three mm-hmm. months mm-hmm. made it a made me a irritable piece of shit. Right. And it, that's fucking insane to me when I figured that out. I was like, damn, I really need to just write don't mm-hmm. i <laughs> like, mm-hmm. yeah it's, it's wild it was wild to me yeah i feel you i feel you everyone has like that that one outlet you know that's near and dear i i like to write poems that's something that kind of gives me that that outlet relief so that's what's up yeah yeah i appreciate that so yeah you know it's it's really tough when we're going through shit and we're like damn it we can't do that shit oh hell no <laughs> fuck all this shit <laughs> i feel it yeah <laughs> um yeah, so wrap it up here. So my last question to you is, where do you see yourself going with your music path? Um, to be honest, I am always like I have always been and I think I always will be the person that will give my music away for free. Mm-hmm. I don't necessarily want to make money from music. I just mm-hmm. want to. I just want to make music and I want yeah. and I just want like the respect of an artist. Mm. And that that's kind of it. Mm. Um, you know, if because people always want to buy shit mm-hmm. from me and it's like I give you the option to pay and people do. They will. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, I'm like, man, just take it. Like, yeah, it's, it's music. I pay yeah. nothing to make it. Mm. You, should, you should not have to pay shit to listen to it damn that's definitely a different outlook um for sure uh that's and that's that's really hard to kind of find somebody like that like i'm gonna produce this great shit and here you just i listen learn you know i think it just helps me more mentally and emotionally Mm. than it will if i like capitalized off of it yeah i mean don't get me wrong, shit. If I had the opportunity, I'll sell out. I don't give a shit. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, it'll never change who I am. Yeah. But it could change how I live. Got right? you. So, yeah. Got you. Money is right. not necessarily that bad if it's in the right hands. <laughs> yeah, most definitely. I feel you. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate you for joining me here on the Grown Up Podcast. Before we get out of here, I got two quick things. First one is I'm going to put you in a hot seat. I got three quick questions to ask you and you just off the top of your dome. The first thing that comes to mind. All right. All right. All right. Number one, favorite place you've traveled to. Tokyo. Oh man, that's dope. Man, I wish he had some, I'm, I'm like, I wish you had time to talk about that. I don't want to make this too long. <laughs> um, all right. Favorite thing to do on your downtime. Oh shit. Uh I don't even know. <laughs> what is downtime? <laughs> <laughs> okay, when you have an off day. 
We have uh, time. <laughs> oh, I'll anything that could get me captivated into a story. I mean, okay. all right, dope, dope. And last one, favorite memory of your music journey so far. 2011, making music every day, all day till 3 a.m. Man. And never stopping. Nostalgic. I literally, I feel like chills because I can feel it. Like it's, I can feel that you were very nostalgic in that, at that point. And that's super dope. Um, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for sharing your story and everything. Um, you know, you're definitely a super dope guy. You guys, please go and check him out. Go and obviously stay to the end of this interview so you can check out the single that we talked about. And before we get out of here, do you have any final words that you want to say? Any personal shout outs you want to give? Of course, please shout out your social media for them to follow. But you already know the links will still be in the description. And of course, let them know where they can stream your music app. For sure. Uh, I want to say thanks for having me. Thanks for doing this for Most me. Definitely. Um, you can find me on cocobebop.bandcamp.com. That's where I'm going to put my music from now on. Um, right. You can find me on YouTube. You can search up Spitz Spiegel. Um, I have Twitter and Instagram, Coco Bebop or whatever. Who cares? <laughs> uh, I want to give a per- personal shout out to Ayer Feet, rest in peace. Um, Marco, Marco Kane, a.k.a. Pyro, Pyro Spoken. <laughs> um the good nature people um shout outs to my homie roger he's producing my next album nice. um i'll i'll probably throw two of my beats on there we'll cool. see what's up um and yeah shouts out to you man appreciate you all right oh boy shouts out Go to ahead. felix and dom all right the homies. <laughs> All right. Yes. Appreciate you. Shout out to all your peoples. Hopefully they tune in and uh, check you out. Check us out here. And hopefully we have you back. Maybe. Yeah. For some new music. Just let me know, dog. Definitely. All right. Well, I appreciate appreciate you. Thank you so much. You guys already know his links will be in the description below. Check him out. Go follow him or whatever he said. (laughs) Um, And yeah, shout out to him. You guys already know. Stay safe. Be kind. And we out. Yee. And so it brings us to this. You ready? Yeah. I'm my own motivation No one got a story like me, they seem vacant Gotta keep pushing and can't be complacent I dug out of hell but I'm still in the basement I said, I'm my own motivation No one got a story like me, they seem vacant Gotta keep pushing and can't be complacent I dug out of hell but I'm still in the basement We don't procrastinate, how many times I gotta say to you We ain't the type of cats to talk about what they would do I'm here to state a few, facts that make it through This life I'm living and even if cash rules I gotta stimulate my mind Mom, fuck fast food trying to give me advice but ain't nobody ask you now you got a grudge and it's personal thinking about this shit even during rehearsal and i know you're wrong but i can't shake it say thank you with a smile but still man i fake it i'm not the asshole here i go handle fear battle my shadow and go celebrate with the beer so artists take what you hear and be picky chances are they don't get it plus your mind is tricky they can fuck you up with one word you doubt everything you do and it's absurd but remember be free like a bird you're a jack of all trades but want your mind to be heard and i get that so yeah we can chit chat and anybody on that bullshit tell them to get back because you're your own motivation no one got a story like you they seem vacant gotta keep pushing and can't be complacent you dug out of hell but you're still in the basement what's poppin y'all i hope you're enjoying the now artist spotlight for this month he goes by the name coco bebop aka spit spiegel shout out to him for taking the time to do this interview i'm super excited to support another batch of artists here in 2022 and i love seeing them do what they love to do as for y'all please go show your support by clicking the links in the description to follow him and stream his music and last but not least you already know what to do for me check out my links in the description as well make sure you follow me so you stay up to date with all the podcast updates now let's finish getting motivated peace
But got daps for show sure and I dig that But hey, I'ma give back, I know what the fuck I do You can get smacked with your whack opinions You the only one with it and I see that you got a lack of millions If the track's offending with the way I'm speaking It means I'm on my real shit just like Rafikin I can't stop, it's the only level that I know Being me is the only person that I show If I change it was for the better You got left behind, didn't develop with the weather And I ain't gonna let no one hold me back Look myself in the mirror when I told me that Because I'm my own motivation No one got a story like me, they seem vacant Gotta keep pushing and can't be complacent I dug out of hell but I'm still in the basement I said I'm my own motivation No one got a story like me, they seem vacant Gotta keep pushing and can't be complacent I dug out of hell but I'm still in the basement Yo man, don't give a fuck about what this fucker says, what that fucker says, just do your art, do your damn thing. Just the one thing you probably got that makes you happy, or that makes you feel good about yourself. You can't let nobody shit all over that. For real. Be your own motivation. Push yourself farther than you ever thought you could go. You know what I'm saying? person that can make you feel bad about your shit is you rest in peace our feet i'm gonna finish what we started